Bush and Steve were way ahead of the curve in the fact that even though they were musicians, they didn't stop themselves from getting their hands dirty with the gear. A lot of musicians had enough problems getting their hands dirty with the instruments. They didn't adhere to the uh, typical way of making records. Reason one, we were willing to try anything. And reason two was we didn't exactly know what the typical way was, except from what little experience we'd had in other studios. Bands were willing to let me experiment. And then for, it was a learning curve for me and sometimes for the bands too. My first recollection of Smart was just how he was able to conjure like an actual sound out of us who weren't that skilled. He was very accommodating and very excited about our music and that was kind of contagious. The only thing that Smart got increasingly better at doing, Butch and Steve, was making their ideas sound better. Whether it be The Weeds, Honor Among Thieves, Swamp Thing, and we played so many shows with them and eventually they all had the center point was that they're connected to smart. We had reggae bands, we had country western bands, we had punk bands. It wasn't just the punk scene. It was a very healthy place to be for everybody. Other than the drinking. Steve and I were possibly the two stupidest businessmen to walk the planet. We didn't know anything about marketing, how to successfully run a real business. We just wanted to have a studio open 24 seven where we could go and record music. That's all we cared about. <laughs> There's no business model, that's an understatement. Listen, if you came in and you had a few hundred bucks, boom, we'll record you. And there, there never was money here. And of course, that, I, I don't, that never was what it was about. And we finished up with Fun with Adams and Killing You. We're here with Steve Marker and Butch Vig of Smart Studios, the big honchos, as they say. Hot honchos and W-O-R-T. We wanted to get some of the artists who were coming through Smart exposure, and there was no way, there wasn't a chance in hell that they were going to get any commercial airplay. Harry Rag had a cool new wave punk show, and he was a massive record collector. And I would listen to his show to hear new stuff, especially he was really into the British invasion, whatever was coming out from the UK. The show that I did was New Needles, and it was a new music show. It was Wart's only new music rock and roll show, so we were really carrying the banner for what new music was coming up. And one of the things that I really carried on was encouraging local bands to submit cassettes, and then we'd play them on the radio, and some were truly awful, but some were really good. They got their exposure and they'd call up and tell their friends to listen, so it's kind of a secret way to get more people to listen to the show. Steve and I had the idea, why not put together like a show, like an hour-long show, and we'll feature the best stuff that we've done in the last month. Not even the best stuff, but the most interesting bands that have come through. They had some, some names that people would recognize, like the appliances doing a song about the Packers, and uh, who knows what cover they were coming up with. And then there'd be these really strange bands that were basically butch, goofing around and just giving them a, a dumb name like Norble Knurble or Rectal Itch. And, and so you didn't know which ones were legit and which ones were just fun. The DJs, the people who worked there were really pulling for us and pulling for the bands we brought in. I mean, they were all excited to do that kind of show too because they were all interested in new music and wanted to hear whatever was bubbling up from the underground. Do we have anything new coming out in vinyl that you've recorded? down there. Oh, lots of stuff. We have the, the new Fun With Adams album will be out probably in about three weeks or four weeks. The other kids have a new...